Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host, Jack, and today we're going to be doing a technology-based video. Now, I teach a lot of technology online, and I've primarily been teaching on this YouTube channel. Uh, you've been learning a ton of stuff about photography, but you know that, or a lot of you know, that I'm also a technologist by trade. Um, that's actually what my uh, certificates and degrees are in, is, is technology-based uh, learning. So, uh, I'm going to educate you today on how to get data off of a hard drive of a computer that is crashed. So we can't get anything on the computer. Um, the client brought in and said, look, I tried to boot it up and uh, it comes up to the screen and says there's Windows systems files missing and I really want my pictures back and I really want my uh, documents and stuff back. So I said, well, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, do that today. And I'm gonna take you through that process, that journey to teach you how to do it also. So then you can pick up clients on your end uh, wherever you may live and you can also do this for folks so we call this data we don't really call it data recovery <clears throat> in a sense because to me data recovery is if a hard drive is corrupted and you rebuild that data and get it back uh, that's a whole nother video and, and i also do that but this is more of um i guess data data discovery i guess or bringing data back from a drive that won't boot uh, so however you want to say that but all right, so what we're going to do today is we have a Dell computer here. I don't know what model it is. Let me see if I can see this for you. Uh, looks like it is a 8300. That doesn't really matter. Uh, computer is a computer. When you start doing computer work, you'll learn that hardware is hardware, so don't put too much emphasis in, um, you know, who makes it. It all basically has the same thing in it. It all has to do the same thing. So, But what we're going to extract from the computer tower today is we have to get the hard drive out. So I'm sure you, if you're watching this video, you already know what the hard drive is, right? Because you probably have it in your hand. Uh, and I'm going to give you a couple of key things that other people will not teach you. Uh, you may never hear again that I found it works extremely well. But, so first we have the computer here. Then we're going to be using something today called the USB Drive Mate. It looks like this. So I don't know if you have one of these around. If you don't, I suggest going to eBay and purchase one. Because what it allows me to do, it allows me to use a SATA drive on the one side connectors, a 2.5 inch hard drive, which would be like a laptop hard drive, and a 3.5 inch hard drive or a standard IDE optical drive, which a lot of computers don't have those nowadays, right? Most things are SATA nowadays or S-A-T-A, -A, SATA drives. It also has a USB plug. So once we get the drive onto here and you plug us in, then we'll plug this into our computer, and it doesn't matter what computer you're using, folks. If you're using a Mac or Windows, you can extract data from a Mac or Windows. It doesn't really matter. We're going to just watch and do that today. It's also going to be a part of this video, so don't go away. Also, you need some kind of power adapter, because we have to either power the SATA drive over here, or you can take this out and plug this directly into an IDE drive, is how that works. So that's how that cable works. Then it just plugs into your standard AC outlet. What we're going to do now is, if you've never had any experience with a tower before, tearing one down. Um, and people often email me and stuff, say, Jack, you know, what level is this? I mean, can a everyday, um, you know, we used to call, people worked on their cars, backyard mechanics. Uh, I call kind of call that uh, backyard PC repair people. You know, that well, I like computers and I know how to use Microsoft Word, so I can fix your computer. Bring it over. I'll tear it down and work on it. Um, and that's fine because that's kind of where I put this as a level one step up from that. I put a level where you've fixed PCs before, uh, you've cleaned viruses off, you've had them open, you've aired them out. Now you're ready to go and take out a component. So uh, and if you want to look at how to clean the PC, look for my PC spring cleaning video. Uh, some couple years back I did that and it is on YouTube still so you'll find that. So today we're going to open up the PC here and we're going to take out that hard drive. So and what are you going to need but for that? Well, what you're going to need is a couple screwdrivers, usually Phillips heads, not all the time. I'm hoping that's to be the case today. Sometimes with brand new computers, new computers, you don't need anything. We find you just pull the hard drives out with uh, a couple rails and they just, they're plastic. They just pull out. So we'll have a look at this one here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and we're going to change the camera around a little bit. And I'm going to take you into the PC and we're going to look around and get that hard drive out. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so hopefully you can see this okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and open this PC up. Now on these Dells, um, this happens to be a Dell, I believe it's a Dimension. 
uh, yes, so there's a delta mention. There's two buttons, one on top, and a lot of people missed the one on the bottom. You push those, and the side of the case actually pulls apart, just like this. Be careful when you open people's computers up, especially like here. I'm in my uh, little studio setting. Uh, I'm working on my actual desk where I do my videos and everything. These are really filthy computers when you open them. Even though the people are very clean when you get them from them. I mean, I know these people personally, and they're very nice people. Uh, the computers suck dust. I mean, they just, they are dust pigs. And uh, if you leave something closed up, imagine if you never dusted your TV and it sat there and used the static electricity and drew dust in for, what? I don't know, a computer might be in your house for three, maybe five years and never opened up. Think of the dust would be on that TV set. Let's go ahead and open this up and lay it down gently here so we don't uh, try not to scratch my desk. I'm sure it has a lot of scratches on anyway. And we are now going to open this up and try to get you inside of it here with an inside shot. And I'm going to try to work around here with this camera because I'm working with one camera today. I want to make sure we're getting the angles that I want. Yeah, we are. So right here now, at the top, is where all the drives are. If you look here, we have a CD drive. Uh, it may, might have a DVD drive. And a lot of computers have that, I'm sure you realize, because it's just dual drives. Um, there's an old floppy drive. So you can tell this computer is a little older. Uh, I can see already with this cable, it is an IDE drive. So it's an older uh, computer, it's an older drive. But now with this one, if you want to look here, we're going to try to zoom this in so we can see uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let me bring his camera up a little bit more. And we'll just zoom in there a little bit. Bring us up. You know, whenever I teach anything, I really want you guys to be able to see stuff here. Try to focus that a little better. All right. That is the drive <clears throat> right here that we are taking out. This drive right here. That's the bad drive. All right. You can see here with this particular Dell, there's little rails. These are plastic. So what that's telling me is I can just push these together and I can just pull that drive towards me. And when I do this, what's going to happen is it's going to get hung up on the cable. All right. There's your first lesson learned. First, go ahead and disconnect all your cables. So let's do that. Pull the cable there. <clears throat> Two, three, four. Okay, we're going to pull the IDE cable. And a lot of people said, well, Jack, if I take those cables out, how am I going to know where they go? They basically only fit one place in the computer. So, I mean, you're not going to have a whole hard time trying to figure that out. Let's pull that out. Now that drive is free. The cables are gone. Now just push in on these two tabs. It's just like I said, this is a Dell. There's a bunch of different computers out there. And that is the hard drive. We can see it's a Western Digital. Um, and I'm trying to see here how big it is. Uh, Western Digital, it's probably a 400 gig, I would guess. WD-400. <clears throat> so it's a 400 gigabyte hard drive. And what we're going to do now is we have it out of here. Now we can hook that to our... USB drive mate and we're going to try to get this turned on and get this uh, to run so we can get the data off of here um, because now if here's the whole thing folks if we would take this computer and reload windows on here like the client asked me I could take a chance of wiping his data off of here so I don't want to do that I'm just going to put that over here we're going to go ahead and close this PC so we'll just close it back up for now I'm going to sit it aside here Let's get that aside somewhere right about there. <clears throat> All right. Let's take care. We're going to move my camera back and uh, just readjust it there for a minute. Okay, folks, now we got our hard drive out. You've seen how easy it was to get that out of the case. Just take your time. A lot of these cases are very, very hard to get open. All right. Now, here's my tidbit of free information. Write this down because you're going to need to know this. And write it down. You can do some research because I don't know if anybody else has ever said this before. I know I told my guys. But um, the thing about I want to tell you right now is if you have a hard drive and the client tells you this drive has been squilling, uh, this drive sometimes the data 
I received an email the other day that said, Jack, how do I get the data back? Because the data is, is jumping. It, sometimes I get some data, sometimes I don't get some data. Sometimes. What's happening in there is these are like the old record players. And if you're young and you've never seen a record player turntable, check that out a little bit. But what would happen is we'd put a record on there and the needle would go around. Sometimes the needle would get bad or something happens or the spindle will get bad and the record or the plate wouldn't spin or the needle would start skipping. So there's two things that can happen there. One, the needle could be wearing out. Two, the spindle itself could be wearing out and that disc is not spinning properly. It's, it's like spinning and then it kind of stops and it spins and it kind of stops because they're spinning discs in these hard drives and you probably do know that. Take your hard drive and put it in your freezer. Wait, let's say that again. Take your hard drive, this piece right here, and put it in your freezer overnight. Wrap it in foil? No. Put it in a bag? No. Do we worry about moisture? No. There's no moisture getting in here. It's sealed. It's a sealed unit. But it freezes the plates. What happens then is when we put it back in the computer, and people say, do you let it get to room temperature? I never did. Plug it in, hook it into your computer, it makes the plates and the spindle stiffer, and as it's spinning, you'll start getting your data in chunks. Do small chunks. Don't try to copy the whole drive because what's going to happen is if you try to copy this whole drive over, you may in fact get to a point where it's overheating again and it's not spinning right. you got to refreeze it. Take small chunks. Take good notes and know what you have copied and what you still have to copy. All right. That's my tidbit of information for you on a hard drive. Now with that said, so we are going to plug this up into our cable here. Um, I might as well show you here because the next thing we're going to be working on is the computer. So we have our, our USB drive mate and we are in our IDE side here. The 3.5 inch and we know that's what this is. There is a little notch and there's a notch on here. You can just plug it right in there. And if it doesn't fit, you're like, well wait, it doesn't fit. Wow, that's what we needed our screwdrivers for. Let's take this plate off, this side rail because it's kind of hanging us up. It's just a Phillips screw. And I dropped that one on the floor. I'm sure I'll find out one day, right? Okay, let's drop this out here. Pull that rail off. Now we can fit this in there. Let's take this, plug it in. It just goes like that. It's plugged in, it's tight, it's ready to go. Some people, if you don't have one of these, tear their computers open, use it as a secondary drive, you can. But remember, if it's IDE and you have a newer computer, you don't have IDE ports anymore. They're gone. Next, take your power plug, plug it into the power side. And I've done this so much, I can't tell you that it only fits one way. So you can't do reverse polarity and don't worry about that. Once you get that done, plug it into your computer, then plug it into the wall. Um, and if it doesn't show up at first time, what you do then is unplug it from the computer, plug it into the wall, and then plug it into the computer. There's no exact science to this. One way or the other, it will spin up and it will start showing you data. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to hook this to the computer and we're going to see if we can pull the data off of this drive. Once we do that, we'll work through the next part of this process. So let's go ahead and we're going to move over to the computer now. I'll see you there. Okay, now that we're back here at the computer, we have our hard drive hooked up. You've seen that in the other video. Everything is ready to go. Now we're ready to go ahead and start pulling our data or whatever pictures or whatever we want off of that hard drive and we have to store those somewhere. Now, some people have this weird idea that they should store it back on the same drive that's already broken. That doesn't make much sense to me, right? So let's go ahead and store this stuff on our own personal computer and we're just going to make a folder on the computer on the desktop with the client's name. So let's go ahead and do that now. And close this over a little bit here. I'm just going to make a new folder. I do have to be on a Mac, but this will work equally well on your Windows PCs. So don't worry about that. Create a new folder. We're going to call this client. We're going to open that folder up. Now with that folder open, what we're going to start doing is, or all we have to do actually at this point, is just drag and drop our pictures and files over. Let's see here where our pictures may be. And sometimes you have to dig around the hard drive a little bit because you know, if you look at a hard drive, there's always a root. Uh, it would be your C drive. I'm already in the C drive here. 
And then there would be such thing as Windows, My Pictures, Documents. You have to go through there and work through there and find the people's stuff. Here's something that a lot of people don't remember and a lot of my guys often forget. Look in there for their favorites. Now, if they're using Firefox or if they're using um, Chrome or one of the other browsers or Internet Explorer, look and see if you can find the favorites or the bookmarks and copy those because some people, that's devastating when they lose all those because they worked so many years to find that stuff. We're just going to go and we'll say we're going to take their music. So here's the music that they maybe uh, they purchased uh, through iTunes or another uh, route. So we would take this music and on the client's computer, I would just right click over here and create a new folder. We're going to call this music. That way I can organize the stuff for the client uh, to make sure I have everything set up the way they want it. I'm going to open that up. I'm just going to highlight all this and copy it. and Just cut paste it over here. Now, naturally, for this demonstration, I'm not going to go through all this. You know how to copy and paste. I'm sure that's just on all you're doing basically is going from one hard drive to another. Um, some people put too much emphasis in this or too much thought, but it's really, really simplistic. And think of dragging and dropping or copying files. No different than if you were going to create something on your computer and you wanted to copy that to a thumb drive or an external drive. It's the same process. Uh, it's just that the... The hard drive just happens to be laying out and uh, you can see it. That's all. All right. So we're just, like I said, for the speed of this video, we're going to cancel this and say, okay, everything is copied over. We have it all done. Now, once we do get that done, we're going to close this out and we're going to close our external hard drive out now or the hard drive that we hooked in, which is, like I said, no more than a USB external hard drive. Now you'll take that client folder that you created and on a Mac if I right click I can say burn client to disk or now you could do that on a PC right on Windows uh, XP and further up you can just right click and say burn this to disk as long as your computer has a CD or DVD burner in it I would recommend DVDs don't put this on CDs because it's going to be too much data for one uh, I, I just know that from personal experience so put the DVD in your computer uh, or in the tray and do burn client uh, content basically is all it is to disk once you have that burnt label it and I would also burn another copy for yourself keep that in your files take that client disk to your client so here's your computer back uh, you can reinstall the hard drive you don't want to give it separate just reinstall the hard drive in it so here's your computer back here's your disk and receive your payment or if you're doing this for yourself um, the best way to get rid of data on a hard drive is a program called uh, Boot Nuke or Nuke Boot. Either one of those. Look for that on Google. Once you run it on there, it basically writes zeros and ones across the hard disk, the whole disk, and, and nothing can be read from it again. To be absolutely sure, what I like to do is I actually put my hard drives on a drill press and run a drill bit through the hard disks um, just to be really sure. Then you can... Do away with that however you want to do away with that. Whatever is your means of doing away with something. Some scrapyard or something will get rid of that hard drive. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on recovering data or uh, revamping data from your hard disks uh, from a computer that will not boot. And I hope you watch these uh, more in the future. I'm going to be bringing to you a lot of technology-based videos. And I will also be teaching this online. So this is my goal. I, I have a goal of uh, teaching computer-based hardware online to give, a, give you another class. Right now I do offer the Windows Server 2008 R2 class online. If that sounds like a big mouthful, it really is. Uh, but it teaches you A to Z on how to set up a Windows Server, how to install the software and add clients and do everything you want to do to that. Uh, but this will be another outlet for you to learn computer hardware and get your feet wet in that. So until next time, folks, keep thinking, keep working, and most of all, keep watching my videos if you're not subscribed to these please click the subscribe button now or if you're just somebody who likes to learn and you want to watch more of these youtube videos check out my website jackstechcorner.com and give a little donation to the show to help me buy more equipment to be able to teach you these great lessons once again thank you very much for watching and i'll see you back here next time on jack's tech corner bye for now